What a start to a game. As a Chiefs fan, a, a long-suffering case of Chiefs fan, it's been a very long time where I have been that excited 25 minutes into a game. Think about the last time you saw three goals go in 25 minutes into a game coming from a Kaiser Chiefs team. So that makes me extremely excited. Another thing that makes me really happy is one of the things we had complained about for so many years is going forward, it felt as though there was no plan. There was no coordination. We'd see Rana up there not knowing what to do. We'd see Modi up there not knowing what to do. Saile, Dupriz, the goals that we'd get would come from luck. But the coordination that Nabi, uh, Coach Nabi has brought to this Chiefs team, especially in attack, is something special. I think in transition, we're going to be very dangerous because we've got a thinker. Sirino is going to be the most important Chiefs player this season because he dictates where everybody goes. What was great about the goal that he scored was Umtuduzi Shawalala has the awareness to run past him and pull a defender so that he can get sighted goal. So I think for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, Kaiser Chiefs was the best team that you could see. Kaiser Chiefs went up 3-0 and it looked great. But we have to be honest about the way the rest of that game played out. We saw a lot of the same problems that we had been complaining about uh, coming from the midfield, coming from the defense. Amazulu got a lot of chances and they hit the, bar, they hit the post twice if I'm not, mis if I'm not mistaken. They had places where if they made a different decision, something could have come out of it when Tuari had to go into saves. So what Chiefs needs to learn is how to consolidate games. How do you take your 3-0 and say, OK, guys, if we're not going to play for the next 60 minutes, let's make it comfortable for ourselves. Let's put the ball down. Let's play it around or let's carry on being as dangerous as we can be. Sorry to interrupt this video, but I need a little bit of your help. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can probably see my subscribe account. And if you can, I'd be very grateful if you would subscribe. That is actually the best way to support this channel because the bigger that number is, the better it looks to potential guests and other brands and companies that I will approach for sponsorship. It may seem like a very small thing to ask for, but it actually helps with all of this. Thank you very much. Let's get back to the video. But something has to happen. When you look at our two sixes, uh, Martin Blom, you know, there were points in that game where I didn't know whether it was Mtetwa and, 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 and Mart. I didn't know whether it was Zwane and Mart or Castillo and Mart or Castillo and Mtetwa because they were making the same mistakes that they had been making for the past few seasons. As two sixes, one of your key responsibilities is to protect the space in front of the defense and also to cover. And part of the problem that was happening with uh, Ufrosla and even Cross at times is because we've set up so attackingly, we have uh, Chivavairo in attack, we have Sirino in attack, we have Duba in attack, we have uh, Kimang Shawalala in attack. It means that the support that's going to cover our left and right back is not going to come from the winger as it normally does. It has to come from the sixes. And one of the things that they have to figure out is who stays and who goes. Because this thing of rotating is not going to work. So one will have to be the anchor who stays in front of the defense. There's plenty of times where there was a cutback from the Amazulu players uh, that could have found somebody because there was a gap in, in, right in front of our defense. And also, when you interchange like that, it means that you are late or somebody might be late if it's not communicated properly. So if you're not getting the winger support and you're not getting the six support, it meant that uh, Ufrosla was caught in no man's land a lot. He had to decide, do I attack the player that's coming for me and leave space in behind, which was exploited a couple of times? Or do I stay back and allow that guy to have enough time to maybe make a move? 
And when Frostler jumps out, you see the, the, the center back now out of position. Your midfielders don't know where to go. And it created so many chances where in defense, it feels as though at times it's still the same old Kaiser Chiefs. Maybe with a little bit more quality in the actual defense with uh, uh, Dortley and Miguel. But we do look a little bit shaky. The big thing that I want to stick on um, when I'm speaking now is... I think what is happening with Coach Nabi's team is that they get so high on adrenaline. They get so high on the game. They're pushing so hard. They're getting excited. They're getting everything. And I think it's killing their engines. Cross was out of the game. And if you watched the Gallants game, towards the end of that game, Cross was out of it. Completely tired. Sirino completely tired towards the end of that game. Abu Mart. So Coach Nabi maybe does need more time to work on the fitness of the boys, but also learn when it is time to slow it down. Because the moment those players started getting tired, we started losing the ball. We started kicking it up. You know, Mart made a couple of forward plays in the beginning of the game so he'd get the ball turn and give it to somebody which is something I hadn't seen from Mark the confidence was great but the moment they got tired they started playing it back they started just kicking it forward they started inviting Amazulu uh, uh, to come at them to gain confidence to push and Amazulu could have made something count which means that game management is going to be very important going forward especially when you're going to play teams like Imam Rudi Sundowns when you look at Coach Mangoba's team, they attack in 10-minute bursts. It's, it's, it's two or three 10-minute spells where they're going hard and attacking very hard. But for the rest of the game, they try and consolidate and, and relax and slow the game down, catch their breath, manage the game. If we're going to score three goals early, but yet we're going to be at risk of conceding three, that's going to be an issue uh, when we play against the more clinical teams. And... Uh, communication and uh, play and all of those things become important when you get into those phases of the game. All in all, I think what's incredible about what Coach Nabi's done in the short time he's been at Chiefs is that he's given our forwards a way to play. He just needs to work on our defense. He just needs to work on the, the decisions we make. And if you look at him, he seems like he's a coachman that wants a team that's going to keep that high tempo up for the whole game. But I don't think this Chiefs team has it in them to do that. All in all, again, Three points in the bag, six points in the first two games. We can't ask for more than that. But I would be lying if I said there's not holes. Uh, there aren't any holes in that team that can maybe be exploited by a better team, by a more organized team, by a team that makes better decisions. Luckily in the PSL, unfortunately, a lot of the teams don't have that type of decision making. Um, Coach Nabi, uh, I think he's figuring out that, you know, his players have limits. And he's going to have to start coaching towards the limits. And maybe even though he wants to play that, that uh, high tempo game for a very long time, that transition game for a very long time, there's going to be moments where we have to sit back, where we have to control the game. Um, the lack of control is what scared me more than anything in this game. That we put it in Amazulu's hands and we put it in such a way that they were finding the spaces. I need the defense to communicate a little bit more, a little bit better with the midfield. They need to be the ones who are commanding to say, guys, please come back. Please cover me. Where are you going? We need two sixes that maybe stop doing this higher grade stuff and just have one guy sit back and the other guy be an eight so that we can keep stability at the back. Every time a team crosses the halfway line and gets into our defensive third, it seems as though they break down a little bit in what they're meant to do, how they talk, where they're meant to go. And um, I think that's going to cause a lot of problems if we don't fix it now. Um, Duba, amazing player, maybe not for the wing, maybe not for a starter. Saile, decision making maybe let him down at times he was making passes that were off and that's when it needs to be important at the end of the game I don't mind the fact that maybe we're sitting back and letting Amazulu go as my last point I don't mind that we're sitting back and letting Amazulu play 
But the one thing I always say for anybody who's watched any of the other shows, the one thing I always say is when sitting back, please remember to be dangerous. Even if it means you're going to commit Sirino and Dupree's and hit them on the counter all the time, you have to keep teams thinking that they might get hurt if they don't play their cards right. Or else there's going to come a team that's going to throw everything at us and a 3-1 three, three, a three, one will become a 3-3 three, three, and uh, we will have undone a lot of great work. Coach Nabi, incredible work that you have done up to this point. Incredible. As a Chiefs fan, I don't know when last I got to look at the tactics of a game from the point of view of a win, without a broken heart, uh, without uh, uh, ranting and going crazy and doing all those things. As a Chiefs fan, while I was live, watching everybody be happy is what we have missed from this team for such a long time. So I just want to take the, ch take the chance, just a couple of minutes to say thank you to Coach Nebi. Um, for reminding even some of those players that there are actually good players there. For reminding some of those players that they can play at a high level. Uh, we complain about Mart and like I said, we saw a different Mart for that 20 minutes. And if we can make it 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, I think we've got a very formidable team. But more importantly, Coach Nabi, six points is great. Six points from a losing position versus Marumo Callens. Uh, three points from a losing position versus Maruma Callens is incredible. Uh, three points where we wrapped up the game early versus Amazulu and actually took our chances. And Chiva Vairo scored. And we scored more than a goal. We scored more than two goals, right? Is so impressive. So onwards, case the Chiefs goes. I don't know how the rest of the season will look. But if we can fix a couple of those things, fix our defense and midfield relationship, fix the two sixes and, and what their roles are going to be, um, fix our consolidation. How do you control a game uh, uh, when you've taken the lead and now you're getting late in the game, you're tired, or maybe the other team is pushing? Um, Tui Amazulu, I always say the same thing. Um, I, I want them to start the way that they finish games. Last season, they played Mamaluji Sundowns and... They came out of that game maybe kicking themselves because for 45 minutes they put Mamelodi Sundowns under a ton of pressure. But because they hadn't played that way from the first whistle, it was too much for them to come back. So I think Yamazulu, Manbo Ethan Brooks and those guys, Bo 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 eh, eh, Muremi, there are players there. I think an attitude shift has to come out from there. And I think they just, they just play the games the way... You see what Chiefs did in the first half? Amazulu is capable of doing those type of things. They created some, some quality chances in that game versus Chiefs. So hopefully they get their act together and we can get more teams that fight a little bit more um, in the league. Guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys after the next game.